You're watching Sports Beat. Running place, Tanef to throw, throws it back to Young. Young catches the ball! They might! They do score! They made it! Meanwhile, you did it! With a lot of play! So many great moments and so many great players came out of Lavelle Edwards' football program. We sat down with a few of those players, and they shared their memories of the coach they knew and loved. He had a genuine open heart and a very caring nature, J.J. Like, he, he loved his players. He looked at us as his kids, and, and that's so unique. Just had that perfect balance in his life, and that showed with his players. Um, we had guys that were knuckleheads, and he knew how to lead them and how to direct them, and he loved them up really, really a lot. And he was able to get the best out of the players from not just on the field but off. I've always been a, a BYU fan since I was little, but <clears throat> I loved BYU once I met Lavelle. Like, it's just, just, just a whole other level. And so it, it changes my... It changed my perspective all for the better. And we went up and visited him at his home, same home he's always had above the temple there in Provo. And, and we sat down with him a couple hours. This was just last year and, and just loved on him and Patty. Told old stories and laughed and hugged. And, and I wanted to know how much I appreciated him and knew what he did for me, you know, because Lavelle really believed in me. He saw something special there and, and fought for me. I know he did that and uh, was a big part of you know, why I won the Outland Trophy. And he put me in a position to do that. And uh, I, I owe that to Lavelle. Um, he would call me into his office every week and we would just talk about things, how things were going, how I was doing, how I was adjusting. Never once talked about football. Those meaningful talks, you know, when I felt like I wanted to go home and, and leave BYU, just because I felt I didn't fit in. And, and to have him to, uh, you know, invite me into his home and. You know, to even have his wife, you know, I, I talked to my wife about this, and when Patty, she was in one of my religion classes my first semester there. You know, and he can put her in there, you know what I mean, <laughs> just, to, just to be there for me and keep me comforted because he knew it was going to be a tough, tough, you know, um, uh, a tough opportunity to be in a class that I wasn't familiar with, you know, especially with the religion. He wasn't afraid to, uh, to give his opinion about where he thought, uh, where he thought we could be what he thought our best potential was, but there was always no question that um, he had tremendous respect for all of us as players and treated us as men. And I think we, we all aspired to rise to that, uh, to rise to his expectations of us. I always put, put my arm around him or would, you know, he'd always spend some time to talk to me. And I think he, he knew how I felt about him, but I just always wanted to tell him. He just means a lot. And, and I think if I were with him, I would just make sure that he knew that, uh, that you know that he meant a lot to me and and that there's great love there and a real strong desire to to have him be proud if if i sat here and tried to recall a football conversation that i had with lavelle i couldn't do it i had football conversations with ken schmidt with tom ramage i had even football conversations with norm chow i didn't have football conversations with lavelle I had life conversations. His example is why his example of a coach is why I wanted to be a coach. Um, he showed, uh, you know, when I first met him um, in the recruiting process, um, I've seen him on TV and I've seen him interact with the community and with the, with the players and with his team, and that was really impressive. But when I got to see the person and see how gentle and subtle he was and how his influence was such a so strong and he showed that you can coach uh, that way and it just really connected with me you know and, and um, it's something that I want to be a part of uh, that, that we represent more than just a football team we represent a lot more on the field we represent our families and that's something that uh, really stuck with me and so uh, seeing him could be a coach and, and, and show that you could do it a different way than the, in the uh, cookie cutter type of, 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 of what you think a stereotype of what a coach should be about he's He's not that at all. He's himself and encourages, encouraged me to be myself as a player. And now as a coach, he's the same thing. His words of advice when I got the job here at BYU was to be myself. And i um, just lucky that, that uh, a lot of what I try to do is, is what he showed me by his example. So uh, just a privilege to know him and um, to feel his love. And so I think the, end of the great thing, the, the, the miracle was that he was able to bring out the best 
in individuals, and he didn't do it in one cookie cutter way. I think he related to every one of his players in a different way. He goes, guys, the most important thing in this life is relationships. And he said, because that's the only thing you take with you when you leave this earth. And that's just the kind of man Lavelle was. He was a football coach, but you know, he had his, he knew where his priorities were. You know, it's a great tribute uh, to what Coach Edwards was to those guys. And all the players I talked to, none of them brought up the win over Miami. None of them brought up the national championship and all the conference titles and all those accolades. They brought up the life lessons that he taught them and they brought up the love, yeah. the love that he had for those players. And that love made such a huge difference in the lives of all those players. Mm -hmm. And there's countless. I mean, we could do this with hundreds of yeah, former players. Exactly. We, we just had a sample there. And they all share the same message. Yeah, I thought, Jason, uh, what he said there, that the most important thing is relationships, and that's what Lavelle did the best. You know, you hear about high school coaches, college coaches, their players, while they're, coaching, while they're playing for the coaches, they say, ah, I hate his practices. I hate the yeah. way he treated us and, and the way he handled us. But then a couple years later, they said, oh, I loved him for what he did. You never hear that about Lavelle. You never say, oh, I did not like the way he treated us. I did not like the way he ran practices or handled us. It was... Love all the way around. And it started from the man at top. 29 years in the same that, position. Yeah. We'll never see that again. Yeah. And this, the way that college football is now with yeah. guys, they're not given a chance to coach that long. Yeah. Or they're chasing the next big contract yeah. or the next big job and they're bouncing yeah. around. We're not going to see something like that ever again, I don't feel. Uh, BYU was loyal to Lavelle. Lavelle was loyal to BYU. He had one offer, one firm offer that we know of from the Detroit Lions after the national championship, but he decided to stay here. And that says a lot about his conviction uh, to Utah and to BYU.